Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm your guest host, Jim Doblin. We're in Anthony, Kansas this morning for a tour of the Southern Kansas Cotton Growers Gin. It's a co-op that's been around here for many years, churning out bales and bales of cotton. Stick around. We'll have their story, plus more, after these words from our sponsors. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning, folks, and welcome to this edition of That's My Farm. I'm Jim Doblin, your guest host for this episode, and we've been talking a lot about cotton lately, uh, primarily from the growing and harvesting standpoint, but today we are at a cotton gin near Anthony, Kansas, the Southern Kansas Cotton Cooperative. Rex Friesen is the marketing and, uh, and crop consultant uh, guru of this facility <laughs> and the one um, in Winfield. Rex, uh, welcome to the program, first thank of Thank you, all. it's good to be here. And uh, this is quite an operation. It, it, is, it is something that I don't think many Kansans realize that we do. I think you're right. <laughs> now, we're very little known uh, in lots of areas. However, in our particular area, we're a pretty important part of the picture. And how long has this facility been opera in operation and the one in Winfield? Are they about the same age or? Yeah, just about. The, the gin in Winfield was the first one apart from an earlier gin way back in the early 80s. There was a, a small one up towards Sterling. Uh, then the Winfield gin came in in 96 and the Anthony gin here in uh, 1998. And then there's a couple other gins too out at uh, Moscow, I believe was in 2002 and Cullison in 2004. When you look at the map mm -hmm. and look at the total acreage, which mm -hmm. you said was about 20,000 or so? This year it is, yes. Uh, the total acreage. Uh, you service, this facility services primarily the south central uh, That's part correct. of the state. That's correct. And so what happens when, when the farmers bring their cotton in? It, it, do they bring it in all at once or do you, do you have a little time in between? And, and what is the season for ginning? Well, the season is pr primarily, uh, the growing season is from about mid-May until October, and then harvest begins in October until it's done. Uh, and that may stretch, depending on the weather, it may stretch into January, February, and hopefully not later than that, but it can, depending on the weather. Right. And we're, we're going to get into the facility in, a, in, in the following several segments and, and see how it's done. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but well, you still have a considerable number of bales out here to, uh, to process. Well, these are actually called modules. Modules, excuse me. We, the bales <laughs> are the final the bale, That's right. That's right. But this amount of modules may, not, may, look, may look like a lot, but actually it's not because right. our gin is able to go through about oh, 25 of these large ones in a day. Right. And, and your, your uh, vehicles will pick up these uh, modules yes. at the farmer's field yes. and transport them here. That's right. We, and where did they end up? When, when, once the, the, the fiber is separated from the seed and all the trash is mm -hmm. taken out, where, where do these bales go? The bales will end up in a storage facility out at Liberal. Uh, and they're, they're held until the bales are all graded for quality. And then the marketing pool, which is Plains Cotton Cooperative Association sells them, uh, and then they can go to anywhere in the world. All right, and we're going to talk about pricing and and some new technology here mm -hmm. in, in just a little bit, probably toward the end of the show. But mm -hmm. Rex, hang on, and you folks, hang on at home. We'll be right back after mm -hmm. these words from our sponsor. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. 
Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tallgrass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. All right, folks, welcome back to That's My Farm near Anthony, Kansas at the Southern Kansas Cotton Cooperative Gin, and we have Sterling Shepherd with us today. And Sterling, what is your title exactly? I'm the gin superintendent. You know all about this operation. How long have you been at this? Uh, about 10 years now. Okay. So, and so, still learning. <laughs> well, I'm sure. You know, you learn something yep, new every day. Right. Some things have changed in 10 years, uh, obviously for the better. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But take us kind of through uh the operation when the when the cotton comes in from the farmer's field you bring it in the modules yes, and, and then what happens well jim what we do is uh as a farmer processes his cotton he'll call in a that he has a module built and we'll assign him a number and our trucks will go out and pick up the the modules and we'll we'll place them in in certain areas on the field as they're called in right. And as they're called in, we gin them in that process, and uh, the module will be backed into the gin onto the roller table where the tarp is taken off. Goes uh, the tag goes to the ginner. The ginner is going to record that number, and the bales from that module number will be tracked to that module. And, so you can uh, keep track of whose cotton is whose. Correct. Space. And yes. and also the seed right. that comes off of that that cotton. The uh, module as it's being chewed up we're, we're applying heat directly to it so we have to dry that cotton to take the, the clean it up the best we can um, the majority of our cotton is stripper cotton so we're stripping the whole plant and uh, which it strips a lot of leaf and trash right. with it so we're trying to get that trash out of that fiber right. and uh, as we put the heat to it we then can put it through our cylinder cleaners and uh, why, is heat, why is heat important to clean the cotton? Uh, so, so it can open up those fibers a little bit to let that leaf detach from that fiber. That fiber, when cotton's wet, it's, it's going to hold that leaf and, and bark and right. trash into it right. more. And then you've got actually two heaters going. You, you, yeah. you, you, you bring it through one and then, then another. Right. We have a in rapid a, fire, fire, basically. The first stage cleaning. It's done with one heater, then we preheat again to keep it clean, or to keep the heat into the cotton. Right. And then uh, we're going to get to what happens after we take this break. Once the cotton is nice and dry and heated, uh, then, it, then the action begins as far as separating the fiber from the seed. Correct. And we'll talk about that when we return from the Southern Kansas Cotton Gin Cooperative in Anthony, Kansas. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. 
That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. It's That's My Farm near Anthony, Kansas at the Southern Kansas Cotton Cooperative Gin. And I'm with Sterling Shepard this morning. And he is the, uh, the guy who kind of uh, keeps the trains running on time. Well, it, it is gin. It takes, it takes a good team of everybody. How it's, many people you got? You uh, got it takes a good team of 20 people to operate a gin. Uh, we have about 10 in the gin itself, right. a couple in the yard, and our truck drivers, and the office personnel along with it. All right, Sterling, we're going to continue our, our tour of, of your gin. Once the cotton is dried, what happens next? Right, once, as the cotton's coming in, the ginner is looking at the moisture mirrors on his console. Uh, he's, it's gonna, that is gonna control the heaters, how much heat we need to put to it. To, we wanna fluff that cotton to get that trash out. So after it goes, gets the heat applied to it and gets into the system, uh, the uh, pickers are taking out the majority of the the sticks right off the bat, going through stick machines, and then it goes into uh, inclines, cylinders, which are taking the trash off. Uh, then it gets uh, preheated again, and more trash is taken off of it. It goes into a feeder above the gin stand, and right before the gin stand, it's, it's uh, salt, uh, pretty much like the stick machines, and uh, the whole process is constantly taking trash out. The land is taken off of the seed right. and as it the goes through the gin, soil. Right? Right. That's the, the actual the, gin. The gin stand is pulling that land off of that seed and after it pulls so much of that land off that seed, that seed will drop into an auger right. which gets weighed and then blowed into our other uh, warehouse. Right. right, and right behind you is, is that warehouse yeah. and that's where the seed ends up and the seed ends up where you don't just throw this stuff away this has use oh yes this is this is our our main product for the gin itself it goes to the dairy farmer uh, the dairy farmer likes it because it's good on the room uh, it uh, acts as a time release capsule for protein going through their stomachs right and uh, they, they really like it and besides the cotton which you which you ultimately bale up into about 500 pound bales uh, you also have the moat Yes, the moat bale. Uh, M-O-T-E. Right, M-O-T-E. It's, M -O -T -E. it's uh, the moat is the uh, the immature seed, basically, right. and the fiber. It's a shorter fiber that's get, being pulled off of the lint right. as it's being combed out to be processed down to our lint slide. Uh, and that's used to make money. Right. They make. They it'll, mean, it'll be literally. reprocessed again. Uh, they'll Little make money bills, out yeah. of it. Uh, car seat stuffing. Mops, diapers of that sort. It's it's a lower grade quality of cotton. There's there's not a whole heck of a lot you don't use out of this. Place. No, everything is used. Uh, our birds, our gin trash. It all our our uh, gin trash at this facility all goes to a feed yard, which is mixed with other feed. Uh, our gin trash, which we call the burrs, is also uh, used in uh, composting, and gotcha. uh, we have a company that uh, compost it, and right. they sell it to. Lowe's and Walmart and other facilities. Sterling, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. I'm a patient of Kansas Regenerative Medicine in Manhattan. I had uh, stem cell therapy in my hips and my left knee. My wife and I, uh, both are patients. We went down there the same day in November. Since then, uh, my hips are feeling a lot better. I can, can work now most of the day if I want to. And uh, before, if I, if I worked in the morning, I was done in the afternoon. Or if I worked in the afternoon, um, I was sure enough done for the rest of the day. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. 
If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 a.m. on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. That's My Farm. It's brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. We're back on That's My Farm at a cotton gin near Anthony, Kansas. We have Sterling Shepard, uh, the man who oversees this operation for the most part on a daily basis. Uh, at the Southern Kansas uh, Cooperative Gin. And uh, let's talk about what happens after all of the byproducts are separated out of this cotton. We see a module uh, being uh, offloaded now, but once, once all of the stuff is, is separated and you've got the cotton, what happens? Well, after we dry and clean the cotton the best we can and take the seed off in the moat, the gin trash going to the back. Uh, we apply moisture to that lint, three to four percent generally. So you, you actually take the moisture out in the beginning, right. but in the end you put it back. Put a little bit back in, uh, helps give the farmer a little weight, but it's mainly to relieve a little pressure off of our press because right. it's enormous pressure on that press as it's pressing that 480 pound bale. Yeah. Uh, and uh, after, after the bale is pressed and tied, it, it, you will see it fall out on the table. Uh, it has a, we call it a cookie cutter to take an eight ounce sample of that cotton and an identification tag will go with that sample, rolled up, put into a bag, which goes to the, uh, down in Texas for the uh, Inspection. Inspection, right. You know, I'm so they, sorry. They, 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 they're the ones the, the government who determines class, the, the government classing office. The, the determines the quality of the cotton. Correct. And and the higher the quality, the better the price or uh, is right. that usually how uh, it works? That's pretty much how it works. Uh, of course nowadays they're blending a lot more cotton. They don't right. necessarily want top grade cotton all the time. They want to blend it with a lower grade so they can get a a lower priced cotton sometimes uh, and get a product, a good product made with a lower cost. So. Right. And when we see that, that, that bale being formed, that pressure, that the, those, the, the compressor, uh, what were you talking about uh, as, as far as pounds per square? I mean, uh, that, that thing is pretty, pretty yeah, rock solid, like a right. brick. Right. We're, we're using uh, uh, five motors uh, that are kick on in stages that is pressing that cotton. And uh, I believe it's around 250,000 pounds per square inch, somewhere in that vicinity. And uh, so it's a tremendous amount of pressure. And it ends up in Liberal. That's where it's stored. Right. And then sent out to hither and yon. Right. It, it'll be identical. Those numbers will, that we talked about earlier will uh, be stay with that bale. Right. It'll be uh, bagged and shipped to Liberal, Kansas, where it'll be put into a warehouse and marked it from there. All right, let me ask you, from from the time these modules go in until the time the bales come out, what are we talking about time-wise? Well, on uh, decent cotton, uh, we're making a bale two and a half to three minutes. Uh, and each one of these modules, on an average, we're gonna make uh, 11 to 12 bales of cotton. So, and every, so every two and a half to three minutes, we're pulling 600 pounds of seed off of it uh, and compressing a bale. That's that's pretty pretty fast. That's pretty fast. Pretty fast. Sterling Shepard, appreciate Thank your you. time. And uh, we'll be back with more after these words from our sponsors from Anthony, Kansas on That's My Farm. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program. 
800-760-4964. HeinenBrothersAg.com. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm your guest host, Jim Doblin, along with Rex Friesen. And we are at the Southern Kansas Cotton Growers Cooperative here near Anthony, Kansas, uh, in South Central Kansas, mm -hmm. that'd be That's accurate, right. Rex. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we've just gone through the factory and, and, and the gin and seen the process, and, and it's quite an elaborate process, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a quick process, really. Yes, it is. Uh, we're gonna talk now about uh, some of the trends in the industry and, and, the, and the future of cotton, but before we do that, let's talk about cotton prices mm -hmm. and, and where we are as far as what you'd like to see and, and where we are now. Okay. Currently our prices, just like pretty much all the commodities, they're down lower than we want them to be. Right. Uh, the current market price is somewhere between 62, 63 cents a pound, and that's based on pounds of actual land. And you want 70 or above? We'd like that, yes. Yeah, that, um, that'd be ideal. Yes. What, what is, what is, what's the hang up though? China is, is playing a big part in this? Uh, China is the elephant in the room. Uh, they, what they do dictates pretty much what happens to prices. And currently, there is a world glut. Uh, that inventory needs to be used up for the prices really to, to take off again. That probably won't happen in the next couple of years, but we're operating at a price that we can still make money, and we are. Right. And you have for the past several years. Yes, we uh, have. Although, although the total number of acreage has diminished, over yeah. the past few years. Yes, it has. In around 2010, I think it was, the price of grains went way up. Cotton didn't, and as a result, we lost uh, a lot of acres, and we're still trying to recover some of those. Right, and, and there, is, there is hope on a number of fronts, technologically, uh, genetically, mm -hmm. with, with some R2-resistant cotton strains coming out in the next couple of years. The farmers out, I know at least in western Kansas, are real mm -hmm. excited about that. That's right. There's, there's new technology in the form of a new, they call it a baler stripper. Uh -huh. It is a harvester that does basically everything. It harvests and packs it into round bales, um, all as a one-man operation. It's a really exciting operation to, to a watch. A one-man band. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then the genetics that are coming out with cotton with all the Roundup Ready uh, uh, pigweed that we're seeing especially, we have new genetics that tolerate uh, Liberty, right. and now there, there's new varieties coming out that tolerate Dicamba, and then in 2017 uh, tolerate 2,4-D. Right, and, th and that's important, especially out west, but here as well. Now, that's correct. We, we, you, you mentioned round bales. Why are they so important uh, for the future of, of the ginning operation? Well, I think it's all about efficiency harvest efficiency as well as the problems with finding labor for doing harvest. Uh, harvest traditionally has taken a number of people and, and more equipment to harvest. This particular machine narrows it down to one person if wanted to be, if needed to be that way. Rex uh, Friesen, thank you for joining us today from the sure Southern welcome. Kansas Cotton Growers Cooperative here uh, near Anthony, Kansas. Folks, that's all the time we have for this edition of That's My Farm. Join us next week for another episode. I'm Jim Doblin, we'll see you later. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.
Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.